Colgate Tooth Powder presents the Theater of Romance. Tonight, Colgate Tooth Powder brings you Victor Moore in Springtime for Henry. Tonight and every Tuesday night, Colgate Tooth Powder brings you the Theater of Romance with your favorite stories and plays. And here is your host to tell you about tonight's presentation, Springtime for Henry, starring Victor Moore with Joan Alexander. It was spring, a time of peace and sunshine. That time of year when man is at peace with himself and with his fellow man. Yes, it was spring. For everyone but Henry. Hello, hello, operator. Give me Walnut 9970, please. Now hurry up about it. Oh, darn it, darn it, darn it, darn it. Darn everybody. Darn. Hello? Hello, Walnut 9970? Well, this is Mr. Dulip, Mr. Henry Dulip. Yeah, that, that, that girl, that secretary you sent, has uh, uh, just left. Of course I wasn't rude to her. I didn't say a word about her. I said something about her mother, but not a word about her. <laughs> then out she bounced. Now, you get someone else over here just as fast as you can. What would I like? Well, now, let me see. Someone blonde in her 20s and about size 16, I would say. <laughs> Certainly it's the secretary I want. <laughs> All right, as soon as possible, please. Oh, darn it, darn it, darn everybody. Good morning, Henry. What's the matter with you? Lose another secretary? I'm sure I don't know why all your secretaries fall in love with you. I'm fascinating to women, that's all. <laughs> I was born that way. My mother adored me. <laughs> Have you ever been in love yourself, Henry? Well, let me see. No... Now that I come to think of it, I don't believe I have. I never really like a woman after I get acquainted with her. <laughs> love is not for me. I'm the eternal bachelor, the man about town, the light of love, the light of heart. No woman has ever run my life, and no woman ever will. I beg your pardon. The door was open, so I just walked in. Well, 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 good morning. <clears throat> my name is Jellywell. This is Mr. Dulip. Oh, uh, who are you? I'm Angela Smith, your new secretary. Blonde, uh, 27 and size 16. That's what you asked for, wasn't it, Mr. Dulip? Oh, well. Uh, oh, must you be going, Mr. Jollywell? Well, <laughs> come around again sometime. Oh, well, I just happen to be in the neighborhood, old boy. But from now on, I'll drop in often. <laughs> Goodbye for the moment, Miss Smith. Goodbye. I've heard quite a lot about you, so, Mr. Dulip, perhaps we should clear something up right at the beginning. I come from a rather straight-laced family in a small town, and my own attitude is extremely straight-laced on all counts. That's, uh, that's a very dreary way to start a relationship. <laughs> I just thought it ought to be crystal clear from the beginning. Miss Smith, I don't think I like you very well. You don't have to like me if my work is good, and it is. As a matter of fact, I don't like you. Why don't you like me? You're why not? Why, you're conceited. You're arrogant. You're thoroughly spoiled. You think that all women are madly in love with you, and that no woman in the whole world is good enough for you. You were listening outside the door. <laughs> I, I was waiting for a spot to break in. Well, you're fired. All right. Give me my $35, and I'll go. $35? That's my week's pay. You have to pay at least a week when you engage anyone from the agency. I'm sure you're familiar with the rules. Well, I'm not paying a week's wages for nothing. <laughs> that, of course, is your prerogative. I'm perfectly willing to work for a week. Well, Mr. Dooley? Uh, Miss Smith, if you work here for a week, one of us is going to change, and it won't be me. <laughs> well, it certainly won't be me. Do you wish to dictate? Well, naturally I wish to dictate. Are you ready? Yes. Uh, mm, uh, May 23rd, darling. Darling, yes. Uh, darling, I have so much to say to you. 
But somehow, when I'm with you, is that too fast for you, Miss Smith? Not in the least, thank you. Well, when I'm with you, I can't say it. That is why I'm writing. Although I shall be seeing you so soon. You so soon? I long to take you in my arms, to feel your heart beating, uh, pounding, quivering. Personally, I prefer beating. To feel your heart pounding against mine. When shall that be? Till then, all my love to you, Henry. Now then, Miss Smith, make three copies of that. Send one to Mrs. J. Hallowell. <laughs> one to Lady Crichton. And one to Miss Janet Harlow. You'll find their addresses in the telephone book. I suppose I've shocked you. Not at all. You haven't even surprised me. You know, it's a pity, Miss Smith, that you and I decided to become enemies. We might have been such good friends. Perhaps we may, yes. If you change. Oh, I'll never change. I'm exceedingly attractive the way I am. <laughs> well, I'm going to lunch. What a week this is going to be. What a week. <laughs> Therefore, it is my considered opinion that the Dulip automobile has a very satisfactory carburetor and does not need a change at this moment. That's all, Miss Smith. You, uh, you wouldn't have to care, wouldn't care to have dinner with me, would you? Sorry, Mr. Dulip. I always go home for dinner. I, uh, don't happen to have any plans for lunch tomorrow. I always have plans for lunch, Miss Smith. Here are the letters for you to sign, Mr. Dulip. Well, your nose is red. So are your eyes. Have you caught cold? No. It's my last day, Mr. Dulip. Oh. Well, good luck, Miss Smith. I'm going out to lunch now. I'll see you before you go. I have a very important luncheon engagement. Yes, Mr. Dulip. I always have an important luncheon engagement. Yes, Mr. Dulip. I shall now go to it. One hot dog, please, with mustard. Uh, right away, Sam. One hot dog, please, without mustard. Yes, miss. <gasps> Why, Mr. Dulip. What are you doing here? That is my business, Miss Smith. What do you mean, following me around? Your hot dog, Miss. Thanks. I'm not following you around, Mr. Dulip. It just seemed a nice day to have a hot dog in the park. Don't you think we might share a park bench? There's one that isn't occupied. I thought I have some very important matters to think about. Well, so have I. We don't have to talk. Let's just sit. Miss Mr. Smith, Dulip. Uh, I'm sorry. sorry. Uh, just what is it you want in a man, anyhow? Do you really want to know? I have a certain amount of curiosity about it, yes. Well, what I want is not so very different from what every woman wants. I want someone who is kind and good and very attractive and, uh, I want someone who will love me very much and never look at another woman. Never? Oh, never. There's no such man anyway. <laughs> My mother found a man like that, and I think that if I hunt long enough, I will. I don't think you'd like him if you found him. I'll tell you why. Now, take me, for example. If I were to say to you, Angela, uh, Miss Smith, you're the most beautiful woman in the world. You know I meant it because I've seen so many beautiful women. Uh, we better go back to the office. There's too much spring loose in this park. A man could get into trouble on a day like this. Confounded birds and bees and baby carriages all over the place, giving a man ideas. Henry, please kiss me. Oh, may I? I've been wanting to all week, you know. Oh, Angela, I'm horribly afraid I'm terribly in love with you. I'm in love with you, too. 
Oh, darling, isn't it wonderful? There's never been a spring like this before in all the world. Well, there certainly hasn't been one like it for Henry Doolip. <laughs> You're so wonderful, Henry. Yes, I know it. You're a very discerning woman, Angela. And you won't drink anymore or, or gamble or run around with women. Will you? Well, I, uh, I'll try not to. Angela, I'm a man and I'm human. Oh, dear, with all the women in the world, why did I have to fall in love with such a good one? <laughs> wings on your feet and stars in your eyes. Romance is a pair of rose-colored glasses through which all the world looks wonderful. Yet just let a little breath of trouble intrude and goodbye romance. I hope that this little breath of trouble, its unpleasing breath, won't ruin your romance. Don't take a chance. What to do? Why, it's very simple. Brush your teeth night and morning and before every date with Colgate tooth powder. Yes, night and morning and before every date. Because scientific tests have definitely proved that in seven cases out of ten... Colgate tooth powder instantly stops unpleasing breath that originates in the mouth. As for cleaning, no dentifrice at any price will clean your teeth more quickly and thoroughly than Colgate tooth powder. Remember the name Colgate tooth powder with the accent on powder. Why not get it tonight? Don't take a chance with your romance. Use Colgate tooth powder. Colgate Tooth Powder brings you Act Two of Springtime for Henry, starring Victor Moore with Joan Alexander. A month later, we find Henry in his office with Julia Jellywell, George's wife. Well, Henry, remember me? Of course. Aren't you going to kiss me, Henry? Oh, no. You think I'm the kind of man to go about the world kissing the wives of my best friends? You certainly always have been. Oh. I'm not the man I was. I've been fortunate enough to see the error of my ways. I don't drink anymore. I don't gamble. What do you do? None of your business. <laughs> <laughs> Who's the woman, Henry? My secretary, Miss Smith. Very remarkable woman, Julia. You won't like her, but she's remarkable, I'll say. Where is she? Her office is in there. Uh, do you mind if I go in and see this woman who was able to make a new man of Henry Dulles? No, just help yourself. <clears throat> Are you Mr. Dulles' typist? I'm his secretary. <laughs> My husband always gets his girls from Baker's. He says they're so hardworking and quite cheap. <laughs> Were you trained at Baker's? No, but then I probably wouldn't suit your husband. I'm not at all cheap. <laughs> You're Mrs. Jellywell, aren't you? Uh, yes. Uh, how did you know? Well, Henry described you to me. I was curious about all the women who received Henry's form letters. Form letters? What are you talking about? Oh, one of the darling, you are the only woman in my life, love, Henry letters. How dare you talk to me like this? Sorry, I didn't realize you were in love with Henry. Miss Smith. I hope you are not in love with Mr. Dulip because he'll grow tired of you, just like most of the other women he's known. As a matter of fact, judging from the way he kissed me, I'd say he was tired already. He kissed you? Why, yes. Henry always kisses me in the spring. And he'll go right on kissing me. <laughs> going home, Henry. Is there anything more you'd like me to do? I'd like you to kiss me. Not tonight, Henry. Angela, I have something to tell you. You might almost regard it as sort of confession. Yes, Henry. Well, I'm a new man, and I like it, so 
for this month, I've been happier than I've ever been. I'm going to live all the rest of my life just as I've lived this month. Why, we've always been frank with one another, Henry. This is no time to stop. I know you kissed Julia this afternoon. I know you still love her. Kissed Julia? You're crazy. Why, Henry, if there's anything worse than a liar, it's a cheat. I'll be hanged if I'm going to stand here and let you accuse me of things I haven't had the fun of doing. The phone is ringing. Shall I answer it? Oh, hang the phone. Do you believe me or don't you? I'm afraid I don't, Henry. Uh, that's just great. That's just dandy. Hello? No, no one's here. They're all gone to China. Who? Who's calling her? Pierre. Oh, give me that phone. Hello? Yes, Mrs. Johnson. Oh, I know I'm late. Is he in bed? Why, of course I'll be home to kiss him goodnight. I'll be right there, Mrs. Johnson. Goodbye. Just, just who is Pierre? Don't shout at me, Henry. Who is Pierre? Pierre is my son. You're what? My little boy. The landlady looked after him for me. I'm usually home before this. Your son? What? Am I to understand? Are you going to imply that you... You are married? Why, of course we were married. I think you're forgetting yourself. Miss Smith, will you kindly hand me my hat? No, don't trouble. I'll get it myself. There are more kinds of cheats than one, Miss Smith. I wish you good evening. Where are you going? Oh, out to do something desperate. Maybe to drown my sorrows. Maybe to drown myself. Anything, absolutely anything I could think of to make me forget you. And next spring, I hope someone locks me up the whole season. Good night, Miss Smith. Where is he? Where's that scoundrel, that, that wasteful? I don't know, Mr. Jellywell. I've been sitting here in the office all night trying to locate him. That bounder's broken my wife's heart. She's been crying all night. Why? He told her he was in love with you. He did? A cad upsetting my wife like that. He told her he was in love with me. Oh, Mr. Jellywell. That's the most beautiful thing you've ever said. Well, I'm going out and hunt for him some more. Oh, buck up, old girl. Hello. No. No, he isn't. Yes, I'll have him call if he comes in. Goodbye. Henry. <laughs> Henry, you're back. You've caught a cold. It's been raining, Henry. Aren't you going to answer me? Uh, I'm not conscious that you've asked me anything. I'm back. I have caught cold. It has been raining. How did you catch a cold? I walking about the park all night when it was raining. Why did you do that? I like the park. I once was very happy there. Henry, I'm sorry I said those things about Julia. I know you didn't kiss her. I'm sorry, no, I didn't. <laughs> I stayed here all night waiting for you. You should have been home with your husband. I don't have a husband. That's nice to say you had. He's been dead for over a year, Henry. Oh, why didn't you... <laughs> say so last night before I went out and caught cold. You never gave me a chance to. I didn't. No. <laughs> Henry, I have something to tell you. You might call it a, a, a sort of confession. Yes, Angela? Well, last night I was sure you'd go and, and do all the things you promised not to do. I was sure you'd gamble and, and drink and come home with six women on each arm. And you were waiting here to comfort me and bawl me out. No, Henry. I was waiting to tell you that I love you no matter what you did. That love wasn't something I could just turn on and off like a, an electric light. Henry, I don't want to reform you anymore. I just want to marry you. Henry, you can shout at me all you want. You can even beat me as long as you don't stop loving me. Angela, my dear, my sweet. So there you are, you reprobate. You scoundrel. Oh, hello, Jellywell. 
Nice of you to drop in. Drop in again sometime when you're in the neighborhood. We're a little busy just now. God bless you. Now, see here, uh, Henry Julep. Julia's home crying her eyes out over you. You you can't throw my wife aside like an old shoe. You'll have to take care of your own wife, Jellywell. I'm going to be very busy taking care of mine. Henry and I are going to be married, Mr. Jellywell. I think you were just about to kiss me, Henry. Oh, that's all. That's right, so I was. <laughs> <laughs> you can't kiss that man, Angela. He's a cauldron of germs. He's got a cold. Well, I can't think of a nicer way in the world to catch a cold. <laughs> Darling, come on. Let's go for a walk in the park. It's waning. <laughs> I'll get my coat. Oh, you're mad, both of you. Absolutely mad. If we are, we'll take a little more of the same. Come on, Angela. See you around, Jellywell. Goodbye, Mr. Jellywell. See you around. And Jellywell, if you don't mind, old boy, I'd like to take this occasion of wishing you and Julia and everybody in the whole darn world a very happy springtime. <laughs> Betty had a bow. Betty and her boyfriend were seen everywhere together, but that was last year. Something happened. Something ruined Betty's romance. She didn't suspect it was a little breath of trouble. Well, what a pity if this breath of trouble, unpleasing breath, were to spoil your romance. Well, don't take a chance. I'll tell you what. Brush your teeth night and morning and before every date with Colgate Tooth Powder. The tooth powder that cleans your teeth as it cleans your breath. Scientific tests prove that Colgate tooth powder in seven cases out of ten instantly stops unpleasing breath that originates in the mouth. So use Colgate tooth powder for all it's worth. Money can't buy a dentifrice that will clean your teeth better than Colgate tooth powder. Remember the name, Colgate tooth powder with the accent on powder. Don't take a chance with your romance. Use Colgate tooth powder. In tonight's play, Victor Moore starred as Henry, and Joan Alexander was heard as Angela. Mr. and Mrs. Jellywell were played by Doris Dalton and Horace Brand. Springtime for Henry, a play by Ben Levy, was adapted especially for this program by Gene Holloway. The music was composed and conducted by Ben Ludlow, and the entire production was directed by Mark Sloeb. Next week, you will hear Blythe Spirit, starring that brilliant actor Clifton Webb. And now, hello from Halo Shampoo. Hello, everybody, hello. Halo is the shampoo that glorifies your hair, so hello, everybody, hello. Never use a soap, for soaping does your hair. Halo means natural beauty the first time that you use it. You need no lemon rinsing after you use it, so hello, everybody, hello. Halo shampoo, halo. Until next week at this same time when Colgate Tooth Powder's Theater of Romance brings you Clifton Webb in Blythe Spirit, this is your host saying good night and wishing you love, happiness, and romance. Does your family like cheese, butter, and good red meat? Well, those foods sure eat up the red points. Well, why not get some extra red points every week? Save your kitchen fat and take it to your butcher. He'll pay you two red ration points plus four cents a pound for that used fat. You can use the points, and Uncle Sam needs the fat. For kitchen fat is used in making munitions, soap for the home front and battle front, drugs for our soldiers, and scores of vital war supplies. So please save every drop of used kitchen fat. Skim it off the soup. Rescue the drippings from the roasting pan. Trim the fat off the chops. Save the bacon grease. It's grease for the wheels of victory. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.